Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm one of your co-hosts, Leslie Richardson. And I'm the other co-host, Robert Green. And I'm your presenter, Paul Sheriff. Cool. And welcome back to what is now the halfway point of our multi-part series all about getting started with .NET MAUI and XAML applications. In the last episode, we talked about borders and frames. And this time we are going to be talking about radio buttons, switches, toggles, all of that good stuff to add to your feature applications. So back to you, Paul. All let's right, go. let's jump right in and let's create us a switch here. So um, the switch is kind of neat. It's you know one of those ones that you see a lot on a phone, right? So let's go ahead and I'm gonna add one more in our user detail view. I'm gonna add one more row. I'm going to then come down here, and right before the address view, I'm going to put this guy in, and then I'm going to simply change these guys here. So if you see this right here, you can see it's now an on-off toggle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if we were to run this on the Android, you would see that the on and off labels here do not appear. They only appear on Windows. Now, you can try to look this up and see if there's a way to, you know, kind of use styles or something like margins to try to get those to turn off. And you might get kind of successful, sure. but it's really not done through XAML. Okay. What, what it's done is through what are called these window handlers. And for that, we're going to go back into our MAUI program and we're going to do a little bit more in here. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come down here after the method that I wrote before, and I'm gonna drop in yet another method. So this one, let me split this on a couple lines here. I call it set window handlers. Now set window handlers is using the Microsoft at Maui.handlers.switchhandler class, and it's calling its, or excuse me, then the mapper.append to mapping. And I'm creating a custom mapper here. And I, I call it custom. I probably should maybe call it custom switch or something, but it doesn't really matter. But if you have more than one, you're going to want to keep them unique, obviously. So then what we do is this gives us a handle into the switch, right? So some switch handler or button handler or grid handler, whatever. They all then have this mapper. And one of the things is what we get is we, it passes us basically the properties, right? The class that we can set these properties on. So I do h.platformview.offcontent equals string.empty because normally it is hard-coded to off. And I'm also going to change the on content. So it's usually on. I'm going to change that to string.empty as well. And so by doing this, we're turning off that label. Then the only other thing I need to do is come back up here. Remember in this hash if windows where I called the set window options, now I want to set the window handlers. All right, like so. So now I'm gonna, let's go ahead. I don't want it to come up full screen every time. I'm gonna go ahead and just comment that one out for now. And then I think that's all we gotta do. Yeah, let's run this, we should have it now. So you're choosing to have the Windows app behave like iOS and Android versus having the Windows app behave maybe more like a Windows app and those two behave more alike. So it's obviously an option you can, go either direction, but that's basically Absolutely. what you've just done here, right? Absolutely. You know, if you don't, if you like the on off, you know, then the fine. Uh, mm -hmm. If you don't like it, you have the ability to turn it off. Mm -hmm. So you can go either way. You know, when I was first doing this, I, I, I kind of liked keeping the interface a little bit, you know, more consistent, number one. But number two, I'm, I kind of like, I was reading a lot because people were talking about this. I just hated it. Wow, there's no way to turn this off, blah, blah, blah. And then I found out about these window handlers. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, we can just do this. And so, again, total user preference. Yeah. I mean, if you don't like it, Robert, leave it, leave it as the off and on. So, yeah. but, you know, definitely something that if you are interested in having that go away, okay, or maybe it's not off and on because still employed off on. Well, that doesn't make sense, right? So maybe you want to do it as yes and no. Oops, other way around. Because if it's still employed, you would actually want to say yes and no, wouldn't you? Not just mm -hmm. off and on. 
Right. Okay. So this gives you the ability not only to take it away, but also to change it to what is applicable for your particular application. Now, I'm, I'm obviously hooking into it here at the global level. So this is going to affect all switches. But there's nothing wrong with doing this in the code behind for the one page, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. There mm -hmm. we go. Much better. So great. Yeah. Good prompting there, Robert. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead, go back to our user detail view. And I know something that a lot of you use are radio buttons. So let's take a look at doing radio buttons. I'm going to add yet another row on. So we're just keep we're just going to keep building up this user detail because I find it's pretty neat just to do everything on one page for a while, and then we can just always expand that out to the other ones. So let's go ahead and add now a label, employee type, okay, and then the flex layout here. And now I've got a horizontal stack layout because I'm going to have two employee types. I'm going to have either uh, full time or I'm going to have part time employees. So pretty simple. So now if we look over here, okay, let's, sorry, seven, I need to renumber these, eight and nine. And now we can see our employee types, full-time and part-time, okay? Now, again, I set the full-time one to is checked equals true. So if you wanna have that one checked when they first come in, you use the is checked attribute. And it is important to set the group name. Now, if these are the only two option buttons and they work together um, on the whole page, then you don't need the group name necessarily. Personally, I would add it every time. Okay, it gives you kind of just one more clue what they are, you know, that these two are working together because it's the group name that determines which radio buttons all work together. So if you had another set of radio buttons, you'd give it a different group name and now they would all work independently of another. So, yeah. So there we go. So a little bit about that switch. And again, just being able to override those labels, completely up to you whether you want to do it or not. But it does allow you to switch, you know, those labels to something that's a little more meaningful when it's not just, you know, off and on. It could be yes, right. no. It could be something else. I don't know. So could even be an uh, employee, you know, full-time or part-time. And then you do the full-time or part-time. Sure. So lots of different things there. So. Um, all right. And basically, boy, this is going to be one of those really short sessions because <laughs> that's about it for this one. I just wanted to kind of show those. I like showing kind of how to hook in a little bit, though, underneath the hood, because that's something that a lot of people don't know that you can do. Okay. Um, you know, one thing you might try is try taking that code out of the app.xaml um, and putting it into or the Miley program and putting it into each individual one and changing these things, you know. Uh, individual. So that could be another option that you can do. Right. Cool. Right. Awesome. I mean, yeah. that's pretty self explanatory there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we strive for. <laughs> yep. That's great. <laughs> there shouldn't have to be that many hoops just to add um, working radio buttons and, and switches and yep. things like that. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah, that's good. All right. So, what's cool. up next? What's up next? Um, actually, really cool stuff. I like these. This is the date picker, the time picker, mm -hmm. and it's just a regular picker or a drop down list. So we'll cover those. Great. Cool. Well, looking forward to it. So tune in for what is now the back half of the series. If you've been watching since episode one, thank you so much for following along. And yeah, we'll see you next time. So till then, happy coding.